Aromatic Adventures with the Candle Enthusiast. I'm back in Jefferson, New Hampshire. You know where I'm going, you know. I'm going to Santa's village, but you'll notice there's no snow outside. It's not snowing. For the first time, I'm going at a completely different time of year. That is gonna be the autumn season. I've come to see the leaves change. I've come to see all the colors. I came to say hello to Santa Claus. I can't be more excited. There's never a time when I feel more nostalgic and enthusiastic than when I'm heading to Santa's village. And that's where we're going. We're gonna be there at the main gates in just a few minutes. But I wanna welcome you to join me for the day. Will you join? You will? Then let's do this. It's a bit more chilly than I anticipated. It gets really cold in the White Mountains. It gets really cold at Santa's Village. I might have to put on a hat and my mittens because there's only so much I'm gonna be able to take of this, of this cold. How does that look? Does that, does that look natural? What if I tip it to the side? Yeah. But hopefully the excitement, the enthusiasm, will warm up my bones. It certainly does every year. Whew. So the first step every year before we go into the park is to talk to Rudolph. Rudolph kind of sets the stage for the whole day. Do you like cookies and milk? Oh, I do, but you know, I really love carrots too. Carrots are so crunchy and delicious. Will you use some carrots? <laughs> Bye-bye. Merry Christmas to you. So let's go over, speak to Rudolph, and see what's in store for Christmas this year. Rudolph, how you doing? I'm doing fine. How about you? I am doing fantastic. As I always say, Santa's Village, one of my favorite places in the world. How could I not be happy when visiting? How have you been since last year, since I've seen you? I've been very well. I've been very safe. That's good. Safety is always a priority, isn't it? Yes, it is. And uh, how are things shaping up this year for, for Christmas? You and Santa, are we, are we on track with uh, all the gifts for all the, the good boys and girls? We are. We're working very hard. Our elves are working overtime sometimes. But yes, we are working very hard to make sure that everybody gets gifts. How has flying with Santa enhanced your life? throughout the years. Ever since Santa brought you to join him on his sleigh, how has that enhanced your life? Oh, it's just so wonderful to be able to fly all over the world and land on the rooftop. Isn't that the greatest? You know, I always had a dream as a boy to, to be able to, to fly. I wish, I wish maybe that's what I'll ask Santa for Christmas this year. Oh, that would be kind of a nice thing to ask for. <laughs> All right, Rudolph. Well, hopefully I'll see you on Christmas Eve, but take care of yourself. And as always, it was a pleasure to see you. Well, thank you so much for visiting us. Anytime. Bye-bye, Rudolph. Goodbye. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. You'll go down in history. All right, perfect. You are all set today. And here's a perk map for you as well. Fantastic. Thank you so much. You're Have a welcome. great one. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh. This is the moment, this is the moment that every year, every year I look forward to walking in through the main entrance and seeing the park before me. Everyone's having a jolly good old time. Christmas music, the smells of Christmas everywhere. Beautiful day, let's enter. Come on, come on in, come on in.
All right, so may I get in as well? Yeah. All right, thank you. Oh man, this is a high step. Can we do it? My foot, my foot doesn't even fit. This is a high step. All set. All right, ready for launch. Whoa, whoa, oh yeah, all right. So you know how it is. I love to start off the day with Santa's carousel. I always forget about this up and down thing, you know? It looks good for the camera. So the question always becomes, does a grown man who is uh, in a theme park uh, filming himself with two cameras, does he get embarrassed doing so? The answer is not anymore. Not anymore. Why? Because life is too short not to live without enthusiasm. Every morning, give yourself a good reason to be enthusiastic and start your day. And that's exactly what I'm doing here at Santa's Village. And I'm allowing myself for just a day, for just one day to be a child at heart and forget about being embarrassed or shy or any funny looks that people may be giving me because I'm holding a camera to my face. And I highly recommend that you do the same. Now it's officially time to start the day. What next? What next, people? I got a couple ideas. Let's get going. If I can get off without falling. Oh. 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 I got it. I got it. We're good. All right, folks, so I'm walking around the park. I'm coming by uh, Frosty Snow Pal, and I see this gentleman. Uh, and uh, now tell me, you were very eager to get up on the snowman. Yes, I was. As a grown man, going up yes. and taking a, a photo with Frosty, do you feel embarrassed? I was thrilled. You were thrilled? <laughs> yes. So what is it inside? Is it the child at heart? It's just my love of Christmas. The love of Christmas. It makes me, it makes me cry. Oh, man, you're going to make me cry. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And uh, have, have a beautiful day. Magical day. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 That was wonderful. <laughs> I'm being honest. I know, no, I, I, I felt it. I, heard, I felt the quiver. I did too. I'm very sensitive to things like that. We, 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 kids. Our kids are probably 25 years ago. They're 31 and 33 now. We just keep, we're up here on vacation. It's bringing back a lot of sentiments. Like, the kids it's a very nice place taking now. pictures. And love it. Still family-owned. Can you believe that? Fourth generation, family-owned, out, uh, outdates Disneyland. All right. He's here, he's big, and he's certainly not square. The big, round, jolly fella, Frosty Snow Pal. I'm gonna step on his mitten. This guy, along with his older brother or family member, Norman Jefferson Frost, they have been standing right here at Santa's Village since essentially opening day. 1953. So since 1953, people could come to this park and stand on a snowman's mitten and say to the world with grand enthusiasm, I'm not embarrassed to be a kid or a child at heart. That's right. And it's time to take a video selfie. Are you ready, Frosty? Are you ready? Exclaim to the world, I love Christmas. Say it with me, folks. I love Christmas. Not every day you get to stand on a snowman's mitten. And not every day do you get to make a fool of yourself and trip and fall off of a snowman's mitten. So let's make sure we don't do that. All right, bingo. So just several weeks ago, the fine folks from Santa's Village invited me to come up and see firsthand the brand new refurbishment of the Great Humbug Adventure Ride, a whole brand new dark ride experience. They've built this extravagant facade 
all of the humbugs inside the ride have been replaced by animatronics. There are three, count them, three Ebenezer Scrooge fully animated uh, animatronics. Uh, humbug. That narrates the story of not only the Christmas Carol, but Ebenezer Scrooge's relationship with those mischievous humbugs. Let's go inside and see the refurbishments and maybe even revisit what I did several weeks ago when I came here to see the brand new ride. The great humbug adventure dark ride. The fine folks here at Santa's Village have invited me to come see all of the new enhancements, refurbishments to this staple of the park. This dark ride that's been here since 2000, they have completely reimagined the whole ride. It's bigger, it's longer, and it's got more magic than ever before. And since I'm here and I'm soaking up all of this autumn goodness and I'm having this great experience, I thought, why not you folks come join me inside and we take an up close look at every new addition, all the new humbugs. Say hello to Ebenezer Scrooge. Why not? I think you should. Let's let, let's head inside. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. Here we go. Now, if you have ridden the Great Humbug Adventure Ride before, you'll probably remember that the queue, the line for the ride, was outside. But they've changed that. They've built this indoor queue that sets the stage, the tone, and the story for Ebenezer Scrooge and his humbugs. Right here at the very beginning is one of the coolest additions, and that is Ebenezer Scrooge himself telling us the story, the history of the humbugs, and his disdain for these mischievous little creatures. But he will not hurt them. He will not harm them. He simply suggests that we take our giggle gadget and the little laser and tickle the humbugs to put them to sleep to make sure they stop creating their havoc. And let me tell you, he looks so incredibly real. He might just be. I was standing over there just before and I could swear he looked me straight into the eyes. And said, I'll tell you what a humbug is, which has always been my question here at Santa's Village. What is a humbug? What is a humbug? Is this a phrase that Charles Dickens coined? Is there a history? Is there an actual thing as a humbug? I ask this every year, but I still don't have an answer. What is a humbug? What? You mean you don't know what humbugs are? Oh my my, they're mischievous flying varmints who can make a person miserable even at Christmas time. Well, he finally clears it up. Let's let let's go. We don't have to wait in line. We have special access. Ebenezer Scrooge's humble abode. Here we are at the end of the queue where we board our Scrooge drivers. It's a little bit spooky, it's a little bit haunting, but it's all in good fun. And there's tons of history right here at the very beginning. Right as you board, we have this ornate mantle. This portrait is of Fanny, Ebenezer Scrooge's beloved sister, who he sadly, unfortunately lost. And she graces this entryway. Honestly, when you look at that portrait, it's hard not to feel like she's looking inside your soul. Yeah, one of the coolest Easter eggs in the entire ride, right here. These heads here are the original humbug heads made from the original mold of the original design. So although we have brand new humbugs in this attraction, we have a little piece of history, a little way to celebrate the ride prior to its refurbishment. It's great to see the old humbugs still inside this attraction. But let's go deeper 
into the madness, into the darkness, into Ebenezer's house, where the humbugs reside. So right as our buggy plows through those doors, we feel this cool AC on our face, kind of like this chill, this blast of Christmas air. But we see the brand new humbug design, the new Target's little creatures. They all have different little expressions. They all have different personalities. They all move differently. We point our laser or our giggle gadget and we aim for these little sensors here and we can rack up our score as we take the ride through the attraction. These deep blue black lights highlight the humbugs and create this phosphorescent glow in their dark quality that creates this extra three-dimensional quality. Ebenezer here on the wall, but something else that we have to point out. Check out the wallpaper. Victorian design. It says ES. Ebenezer Scrooge. Miserable looking fella. When we walk through this room, which has this feeling like we're walking through the hallway of Ebenezer Scrooge. Portraits of what we can only imagine are the ancestors of Ebenezer. They're all quite spooky, especially this little boy, which just might be Ebenezer himself. But if you look carefully, a humbug behind his shoulder, this place is so big and although it is a dark ride it's not very dark at all the lighting design in this ride is insane it's actually quite bright everything from the shadowy silhouettes casted on the walls even the floor is completely textured with lights it's like a broadway show in here Time to head into the next room. Follow me. Oh boy. Well, this certainly looks comfy cozy. Maybe we should have a seat, or maybe not, because this is Ebenezer Scrooge's lounge. I don't think he'd like us getting too comfortable. It's his lounge, his study, humbugs aplenty. We even have a little humbug dangling. He's okay, but he is dangling from inside uh, the chimney. One thing that I noticed when I, I came into this ride, every single room, not only do we have the sense, the sounds, the music, all of the special effects, I feel like I can smell every scene and all of the little details. The fire, for example, that split firewood, that pine, that cedar, smoldering, crackling, that sweet, ashy material inside the chimney. I can smell it and I can hear it. It comes to life, but not just the fireplace, the books, the leather bound books, the old documents and pages, even the furniture, the leather chair. Although there are no scents, they're not pumping anything into the air. I swear you feel like every room you can experience the aromatics of this ride because of the level of detail of this scenery. It is truly one of the coolest things about this new ride. On Ebenezer Scrooge's bookshelf, his collection of classic fiction, I see Huck Finn over here and Hamlet, Moby Dick, Robinson Crusoe. Um, we also have the clock reminding us because time is such an important part of this story. On these ancient scrolls, these dusty pieces of paper, we have excerpts from the Christmas Carol. Right here we have one about Jacob Marley, Ebenezer's deceased partner in crime exiting the library, heading into the dining hall right down this way. Now we know that Ebenezer Scrooge, he's certainly no fan of Christmas, celebration, getting together with your friends and loved ones and having a nice meal. So as we take a look at the table here, it'll come as no surprise that the, 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 the holiday turkey, the bounty upon the table is untouched, even the brandy in the glasses on the table are completely untouched. This dinner for two, 
But Ebenezer, no, no, bah humbug. No, no celebration, no bounty to be had. However, the humbugs are having their own sort of celebration. They are attacking. That's right, attacking this table and all of the food. This guy right here, this humbug, he's eyeballing that cake. He's getting that cake. But there's more of Ebenezer's house to explore. So let's head through these next set of doors. Well, we saw Ebenezer in the opening queue of the ride, but here he is again. He's got his can, his spray, to tickle the humbugs. We have lasers, he's got his, his, his pesticide spray. Harmless, but still, you know, teaches these little critters their lesson. Hey, well, everyone, you're really making a difference. We gotta make those humbugs giggle. Ah, humbug! He gives us further instructions and warnings as we come into this next room. As he should, because as it turns out, the next room is Ebenezer's bathroom. We're really getting a full tour of this place, his house, and check it out. You know, the last place you want to find a humbug is in your bathroom. Uh, let me tell you, it's never a good situation. This little guy hiding behind the shower curtain. Could you just imagine, you're walking into your bathroom, right? You're drawing your bath, and you're about to get in, and you pull, you, you, you pull the curtain, and you see this guy sitting in your tub, and he's, he's scrubbing himself, you know, he's doing one of those little wipe the backside with the towel. That would freak me out, and I've been in a lot of precarious situations. They're coming out of the sink, they're hanging from the walls and the shelves, and for some reason, you're okay with a humbug in your bathtub, one protruding from your sink, well, that's just going too far. The humbugs truly are tucked in every nook and cranny in this place. We have band practice, folks. I don't know if that's exactly what's going on, but we have a, a whole family, a whole clan of humbugs, sort of a symphony of humbugs. They all have different instruments that they are playing. Is that a French horn? I'm not sure, but it's a, a, a big horn. And uh, for a small guy, that's a lot of work to make that horn go woom woom. You know what I mean? We have the stand-up bass here that this humbug is playing. Music that this guy is reading. I wonder what the music is. Ah, oh, yes, it is a carol of the bells. Wouldn't that be interesting to hear that song with this horn, the stand-up bass, a gong, a kazoo, and that really beat up, broken down, ancient looking piano. Well, we'll hear what it sounds like when we get on the ride because they indeed uh, play all of these instruments. I don't know many people who play the kazoo, but if there was ever an instrument that was appropriate for a humbug to play. It's certainly the kazoo. And this old, old piano, not only is a beautiful addition, a prop to the scene, but it is, it has been here at Santa's Village for decades. It's been repurposed for uh, many, many different attractions. So again, not only do we have this entire new ride, but a lot of the elements that are in this ride are from the history of older rides, attractions, things that you will remember of Santa's Village. The portrait of Jacob Marley. And when we get on the ride, we'll see this very uh, stern looking fellow. You know, he's not the happiest looking guy, but he will transform into the ghost the trapped in purgatory ghost that visits Ebenezer Scrooge on the eve of Christmas. Now I mentioned how the rooms are so detailed that you can actually smell the scenes. And this room is no exception. In fact, it's probably the best example. Look at this 
ancient kitchen that's been taken over by the humbug critters. They're cooking up a storm. That can't be a good thing. We even have this stock pot with a humbug inside. Now don't worry, this isn't a humbug stew. He's just hiding inside that pot and he pops out when the ride is in full animation mode. This stove, how incredible is this prop and the set design of this room. The texture of the walls. So when we ride through this room and we see all of these props from the food to the stove, we can smell again the raging fire. Who knows what's in that stove and what these humbugs have cooking. All of these sweet treats, the foods, even the breakfast cereal, unlocking childhood nostalgia, opening up those gates. Sometimes it's happening on a subconscious level, but let me tell you, the effect is priceless and you can feel it. We're gonna open up this next set of doors and we're walking into this green room filled with vegetation, trees and flowers, florals, concrete, sculptures, fountains. I can smell the fresh circulating air of the, the fountain. I can feel that AC cooling this whole room as if these windows leads us to the icy cold nights of Jefferson, New Hampshire here at Santa's Village. We have a very starry, starry night out there and the black lights truly make this sky pop. And not just the sky, but the twinkle of the stars and it backlights all of the humbugs in this room. With just a little bit of imagination, this room makes you feel like you are looking out into the vast horizon. I don't know about you, but I just want to grab a book and sit by this window and enjoy the nighttime mystical sky. Incredibly beautiful. So, not all haunting, not all spooky. Things are starting to get a little bit brighter. Things are starting to get a little bit happier. Maybe things are coming around. Maybe Ebenezer is changing his ways. Maybe he's starting to embrace the holiday season. Maybe a little bit of that pessimism is turning into holiday enthusiasm. Maybe the humbugs can help Ebenezer once and for all change his ways and learn to celebrate and embrace the holiday season. Is it possible? Could it happen? Can it be? Well, let's find out. Let's head into this room. We have this shimmering light, this dreamy light that casts down on once again Ebenezer Scrooge. And look at his face. There's a smile on that face. And not only that, but his pal, his friend, his confidant, the humbug, is sitting on his shoulder, giving that little look on his face, as if to say, I told you, Ebenezer, I told you, you would learn to love Christmas. This is the final scene here in The Great Humbug Adventure. And uh, what a way to close it off. This beautiful set of the Christmas tree, even the humbug holding the, the Christmas star on top of the tree with the multicolored flickering twinkle lights and all of these boxes, these gifts, these packages, you'll notice that they have names on them. All of the names on these boxes are members of the Santa's Village family. The founders, the first, the second, the third, and the fourth generation. The folks who have been the caretakers here at Santa's Village for almost 70 years. If there's a way to truly celebrate the memories, experiences of all of the patrons, the, the customers who've come to Santa's Village, it's to see this ride completely bedazzled and renewed, a breath of fresh life. We did it! Thank you! I'm actually feeling a little bit 
happy for now. Come back soon, because I'm sure those humbugs will be back too. It really helps celebrate the spirit of Santa's Village, the magnificent park that it is. It's an exemplary example of uh, how much love and dedication this family owned and operated park can year after year continue to create magic with each new and coming generation. Create new stories, new memories, young and old. So taking this up close look was priceless, but, but we need to actually go on the ride, right? Uh, we need to experience this ride in its full glory. We need to turn on all of the sound effects, the music, the lighting effects. We need to see all of the motions of the animatronics. We need to experience the great humbug adventure while riding in one of these puppies. So let's do that now. All right, Ed, can I get, uh, can I get into the, the Scrooge driver here? All right, step in, sir. All right. My giggle gadget in hand, but I think I am going to let this sit for this ride. All right, here we go. This is it, folks. Thank you for joining. Into the doors. I am Ebenezer Scrooge, and this is my home. And these humbugs are making me miserable. There's one now. <laughs> I'll teach you to keep from coming here and trying to spoil my Christmas. These pesky pests are everywhere. There are so many of them. Bah, humbug. Terminator, but I know how to take care of them. I've been spraying these bugs for hours, and they're still swarming my house. <laughs> Making a difference. We gotta make those humbugs giggle. Bah, humbug! <laughs> oh my goodness! for your help. Now keep up the good work. There's still more ahead. Oh, my.
you for all you've done. You've helped make me almost happy and taken some of the humbug out of my Christmas spirit. Humbug's always been pretty special to me. I work in electronics, so I've always tinkered on it, so I've always been part of it. The technology is leaps and bounds above what it used to be. So when I started here 19 years ago, there was an old radio style gun system. It was nice because you had a separate scoreboard, so it wasn't quite a shooting gallery, it was a contest when you came out. Um, but that system didn't hold up well. You lost a lot of the individuality. You came out of the ride with just a score. This is what it's supposed to be. Basically everything's computerized now. It makes the ride much more enjoyable as far as scoring. Every gun is an individual. Every target is an individual. Always had the dream of it being something else. This new system makes the whole experience much more personal. The details of the ride bring a lot of the storytelling to life. Hopefully it stays this way for a long time to come. I love Christmas. Anything about it makes me smile here. The whole park just smells like Christmas. You can go any place throughout the park and there's always some sweet aroma, some, some smell that brings you back to when you were young, just waiting for Christmas. You know, grandma's apple pie or hot cinnamon buns on Christmas morning when you walk past the bakery, the little donut factory. You can't go back past there without thinking, oh, that smells good. So it's no longer the, the, the beginning of the day. I've been taking my grand old time. And you know the rule, the rule is that you must get on Santa's Skyway Slate before the lines get too long. So that's where I'm heading, that's where I'm going to get on my vehicle and take my annual drive. Skyway Slate. All right, let's do it. <laughs> See, everyone is in the Christmas slash Halloween spirit, and there's no better time to go on Santa's Skyway sleigh. I do it every year. It's a tradition with me, you know? If I, if I don't do it, I feel like the season is a miss, and uh, it's always a peaceful ride in the sky. How else can I say that? How are you today? I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing? Uh, just going to be myself, and I believe that the words are up, up and away. That's right. Exactly. All right. Just going to wait a second. Here. Sure. <laughs> a little bit anticlimactic, but all right. That's okay. <laughs> all right. Here it is. Hands in the air. At least one in the air, because I'm holding the camera with the other. I get on the sleigh and it's my few minutes to reflect and think about uh, the, 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 the past year and uh, share any words of wisdom with you folks that I might have um, and I think I know what I want to talk about. You know, for five years I've been coming to Santa's Village and making these little adventure videos and now did I think that these videos would be viewed by uh, hundreds, let alone thousands of you folks. A lot of people write to me and tell me how much these Santa's Village videos help them. Help them because some folks don't have the opportunity to visit Santa's Village and do this for themselves. Other people desperately want to celebrate Christmas any time of the year, uh, just like they do here in Santa's Village. And that helps them. But I'll tell you what helps me. The folks that have written me, who have uh, left kind comments, 
people who stopped me in public and told me that they uh, enjoy watching my video, even if we've never met, even if we've never corresponded, if no communication at all, if you sat uh, with your family or by yourself in your living room, on your computer, on your cell phone, and if you ever watched one of uh, my Santa's Village videos, I want to take this moment to tell you how grateful I truly am. Gratitude, folks. It's what it's all about. It's what it's all about. And if I may, let me suggest, if every morning you can roll out of bed and think to yourself, make a list if you have to, of all of the things that you're grateful for, and focus on these things that truly brighten your life, that open your eyes, enhance you as a person, I guarantee that you'll spend the rest of your day with a little bit of a brighter attitude, a little bit extra enthusiasm. So if I ever had any words of wisdom to share, that's what it is, at least on today's adventure, gratitude. Start every day thinking of what you're grateful for and let it soak in. Instead of working out the problems in your head, instead of focusing on all of the cynical thoughts, for a moment just put them away and think about the things that brighten your life. And what brightens my life, Santa's Village, and you folks, as sincerely as I possibly can from the bottom of my heart, I want to take this time and say thank you because I am grateful for you and you enhanced my life. I didn't, I didn't know why I was doing this five years ago. I just knew that if I just tried to put out some positivity and to put it out with as much enthusiasm as I could, I thought maybe it might be contagious and therefore, maybe I could create a little bit of my own good in the world. Every day I'm reminded of how positive you guys are, how much you share your, 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 your generosity, your genuine spirit. Thank you so much. That's what I got, folks. as easy as it looks. And there's a seatbelt. All right, I think I'm gonna try to keep the hat on. I need to really com compound it. I need to make sure that it's compressed on my, my cranium. All right, are we ready? You know, you start to understand why yeah, these things are made for children, you know? I'm not a child anymore. It hurts. Alright, let's get
keep this going. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> All right, so let's head into the North Pole a workshop where you can be an elf and make a present. I don't believe we've ever been in this particular gift shop before, so come on in. Let's see what uh, what we have going on inside. Right off the bat, I'm seeing tons of Santa's Village themed gifts. Things for the whole family. All of your Christmas shopping can be done right here at the North Pole. But something very specific caught my eye. And I'll tell you what that is. I'll show you what that is right over here. Oh yes. Yes, you know it. We have a humbug. And it looks like an original humbug. It even has the little pipe cleaner antennae. This has definitely got to come home with me. But since I am mainly a, a wintertime December patron of Santa's Village, I'm not familiar with this character's name, this abominable snow monster deal. So we have to do a little bit of research on that, Santa Claus. I believe in Santa Claus. Santa's Village, Jefferson, New Hampshire. How cool is that t-shirt? And if it wasn't cool enough, it glows in the dark. The majestic nature of this workshop is absolutely gorgeous. As you stand amongst the gifts in the middle of the showroom here, we're presented with this facade above our heads. It's an entire village that's on the second floor. It's the workshop though, because if you take a look, we have all of the gears, all of the mechanisms that help make the gifts for Santa Claus. So as I said, I am a December patron of Santa's village. So there's certain characters, and I love all the characters that's in his village, but there's certain ones that I don't know the names of. And this, this is one of them. This kind of uh, abominable snow monster kind of creature. So I found uh, a young gentleman here who's gonna help us out. Dakota, that's correct? Yes. Uh, I'm Shane, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Shane. It's a pleasure. Uh, so this guy right here, could you tell us anything about this character here, his name? His name is Snog. We call him the Snog here. Snog. Uh, we have a whole water park dedicated towards him. Uh, he's one of our favorite ones around here. Is he a friendly beast? Oh, he is a friendly beast. He's a friendly beast, okay. So Very that's, friendly. That's all we need to know. So don't be, don't be deceived by appearances. <laughs> There's sharp teeth. He's, Never judge a book by its cover. No. There you go. See? Words of wisdom. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Have a great day. You as well. This humbug is coming with me. All right, there he is. Take good care of him. So do you want to see what I woke up to this morning? Look at that view. We're moments away. Merry Christmas, everyone. There's already snowball fights. And how long have you been here? Since I've been on Santa's sleigh. Entering the park for the first time. What? Walt Disney, eat your heart out. Now, many of the adults in the park might be asking themselves, doesn't this man feel a little bit uncomfortable recording himself? Not really, not at all. So apparently an interactive ride, uh, the Humbug Adventure, 
the Skyway sleigh up, up, and away. It's all about experiences, right? You need these childhood experiences. Moments like this are helping me relive the past. I can see them. I can see them in their eyes. How do I get out of this thing? Can you hear me? Right now, I'm smelling hot chocolate and coffee. This is bliss. Aromas are forever bound to our memories. We can't ever forget that. He was gonna photobomb, but instead he said hello. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great day. Right here, I can smell it. Have we smelled it before, but can we not recall what they smell like? That's good. Donut factory, hot cocoa, hot coffee stand. I can smell that fresh ginger spice. I can smell that soft cinnamon sugar. I can smell that half-baked gingerbread dough. I can smell peppermints. I can smell candies. I know, Is right? That a it smells so good in here. So good. It's some kind of mixture of apple cider donut, muffin, like almost like a funnel cake. All sorts of treats and goodies. Of course, I'm also sitting right underneath a pine tree. And who doesn't want to be on a Ferris wheel when it's 10 degrees outside? All right. And it's rocking. It's rocking. I want to thank you again for joining me on a very special day. This is something I've always wanted to do, and nothing makes me happier than being able to share this experience with you folks. Hope everyone's having a wonderful holiday. And guess what? You know what I'm going to say. I'll see you guys real soon. Good night. And I'm standing right at the corner of Ho 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 Boulevard and Snowball Avenue where we're gonna find the Snowball Mall. So let's do a little bit of Christmas shopping, you and I. How about it? Hello, how you doing? Here inside uh, this first enormous room. Uh, everything from super small pocket-sized plush to, oh no, Bigfoot. All right. Bigfoot's coming with me. I'm sorry, but it's gotta happen. I just did some massive Christmas shopping. Got a lot of shopping done for the Christmas season, even though I got two and a half months until the holiday. It doesn't matter. I had fun in the process. Got lots of good stuff. And you know what? I even got a little stuff for me. A little stuff. So I've been asking around, trying to figure out what beverage is synonymous with Santa's Village. Like if I were to get one beverage, beverage and one beverage alone, what would it be? And it's kind of hard because half the folks are saying like, well, I always get hot chocolate. And the other half are always saying, I, I get coffee. So I said, what would be the most odd beverage to get this time of year? And that question was unanimous. 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 What's the word? Unanimous? Unanimous? It doesn't matter. Icy. And you know what? I'm gonna do it. It's cold. I'm gonna get a summer beverage. Hi, how you doing? I'm gonna get uh, one of the icies. Can I get, uh, is it the blueberry? Blue? Blue raspberry. A small, a small size. Anything else I can get you? That's gonna be it. You know, how many people order a frozen beverage 
when it's this cold. Oh yeah. <laughs> Not many or a few? Uh, we've had like a couple today. A couple? All right. Yeah. It's more than I would have guessed. If you had to take a guess, how many years ago do you think is the last time I had one of those? Um, I don't know, three? Three? Uh, it's probably closer to 30, but I would say about 25 years. Oh, really? Yeah, and you know what? I'm excited. <laughs> I'm about to do it. It's one of the most nostalgic things I can think of. Oh, yeah. I appreciate it, bud. Have a good one. You too. I got it. I got it. Let's do it. So, Blue Raspberry Icy. Uh, I remember this being the best beverage you could ever, ever buy or drink inside of a movie theater. Did you know that Blue Raspberry Icy was uh, one of the first to name a product Blue Raspberry? Blue Raspberry actually is a, a real thing. The something leucodermis berry it's a real thing it's tart it's like an underripe cherry they wanted to utilize the color blue because they thought it was thirst quenching and looked cool to kids so they invented blue raspberry so icy and flavor ice were among the two if not the first two products to use the flavor blue raspberry here we go Oh, oh, you know, here's the thing. It's freezing cold, but I am so thirsty. I should drink water after this, and I will. But what I completely forgot about is how soda pop it's like. It's like, I don't know if I can say I taste carbonation, but I feel like there's some fizziness and it's fluffy like fluffy like cotton candy where it's deceiving you see I only took two small sips and it's gone down a lot like it deflates as you drink it I feel like I'm getting a little bit intoxicated here I might finish this thing I'm not gonna be sorry about it does anybody else have a problem if I drink my blue raspberry? I didn't think so. It tastes blue. There's no question. Uh, like blue uh, cream soda that has a little bit more acidity in it to give it a kind of a citrusy zing. Yeah, citrusy zing. That's what it has. It's time to remind the people who don't know. I can't have large amounts of sugar in one sitting. Can't do it. But you're probably asking, well, what happens if you do have too much sugar? You know, a little bit of that, you know, a little bit of this, and then it's all downhill. It's a, it's a slippery slope or a slippery spiral. Slippery spiral. That's some dangerous terrain. It's time. The Yule, the Yule Log Flume. We're here at Santa's Village. Never ridden this before. The people behind me are taking the plunge. I am going to take the plunge. And we're here, we're doing it. And we're gonna do it together. Yeah, that'd be great, thank you. Oh. <laughs> 
wild day, an adventure for sure here at Santa's Village. As always, I want to thank you for joining me on all of my many adventures to Santa's Village, but especially this one. I will return and you're always welcome to join me, but for today, that's it. Be good, I'll see you soon. It's time to take the plunge.